Well, I will confess, I am still very happy that Elon Musk purchased Twitter. The ensuing outrage was sweet enough. And if in the end, as I've already stated, he just nukes the platform, so be it. There's so much wrong with Twitter, whatever. I mean, it's, it's got a value to it. But Elon Musk is folding. He's saying he will not reinstate new accounts until at least a few more weeks because his, he needs to build the process to do so. And of course, I can already hear many of the sycophants saying, oh, but, but he has to do it, Tim. He has to do it. Yeah. Almost four years ago, Jack Dorsey told me privately, we are working on a path to redemption. Trust me. Don't worry. Once we get it set up, people can come on back. That never happened. Jack Dorsey still claims, I don't know what he's doing now, but he's making that blue sky protocol thing. He wants to make a free and open internet. He told me when I went on the Joe Rogan podcast, he says, the goal is to make a blockchain social media. And I said, I don't even know if I agree with that. That's a little too far, dude. Like you should be able to to ban some stuff. I mean, if you create an immutable ledger and someone posts like child abuse or something like Hey, you know, we, we do need some degree. Is that it? Was that the game? The big ask? Come out and be like, we want to make it so that anyone can post anything and it can never be removed. And then we go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We actually do want some censorship. We don't want political censorship. We want censorship of like, if someone posts child abuse, if you know what I mean. The police need to, you know, shut that down. There's, there's, there's limits, right? Well, here's where we are right now. Elon isn't just saying, He's not going to bring back these accounts. He's outright saying that he's working with organizations that have made bots and spam and fake news and are solely based on grievance to make money. Congratulations, Elon. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have as much faith as a lot of these people have. A lot of people are saying, you know, it's, it's you just, just wait, give Elon time. No, no, for sure. I totally get that. And Elon taking over the platform is still a net positive. But yo, last Friday, I said when Elon announced he was not going to be reinstating people, I said, here we go. The same excuses we've already heard. If Elon isn't willing to come into this platform with a sledgehammer, he's not going to come in later and fix anything. Here it is. Yoel Roth tweets, we're staying vigilant against attempts to manipulate conversations about the 2022 U.S. midterms. Read on for independent analysis of our team's work. (sniffs) Renee DiResta, happy one week before the midterms. Here's a report we just put out on six networks that Twitter released to outside researchers. Five of the six had a fair bit to say about American politics, including the election. They varied between fake Dem and fake Republican perspectives. And that's the EIP partnership. It's amazing. Here, I just want to make sure this is clear. Here's a report we just put out on six networks. Here's a report we just put out on six networks. We just put out. I want you to, I want you to hear that, okay? I want you to hear that. Yoel Roth says, read on for independent analysis of our team's work. Sounds a whole lot like you're working with Rene DiResta, Yoel Roth, and Elon Musk. Now, of course, I can get into all of the grievance organizations Elon's working with, but let's just start with this tweet from Mike Cernovich. New knowledge, an organization got caught buying Russian bots to follow Roy Moore on Twitter during the 2018 midterms. That's an odd source to rely on for an independent analysis of the 2022 midterms. Ah, and here we are. Rene DiResta is the director of research at cybersecurity company New Knowledge. That's right. They made bots. They got caught. Elon, who are you working with, dude? Now, I can certainly understand he doesn't know, right? Maybe he doesn't know he's actively working with the machine. Yeah, sorry. I'm not going to buy it. As much as I can gloat and laugh about Elon pissing off all of these woke lunatics, we have pointed out Elon is far from perfect. There's a lot of issues with Elon Musk. We are happy that he's making jokes. We are happy that he says, I'm going to buy Twitter because they banned the Babylon Bee. But then he's not taking action. So of course, net positive for sure. It's still a win in the sense that all these whiny leftists cried and threatened to quit the platform. But Elon is folding and he's folding fast. Cernovich goes on to say, when Russian bots began following Roy Moore in 2017, it was treated as a huge national story. Moore was mocked for blaming Democrats. 
Yes, Democrats bought the bots and hoaxed the willing press. Now someone who works for new knowledge, the same firm, is on 2022 integrity. Quote, we orchestrated an elaborate false flag operation that planted the idea that the Moore campaign was amplified on social media by Russian botnet, the report from New Knowledge says. Absolutely incredible. Mike says, they literally bought Russian bots to follow a Republican during the 2018 midterms, creating a huge media circle based on their hoax. Purchasing bots and then pitching yourself as an expert to the media to explain that the bot's presence is proof Russia wants a candidate to win is deliberate election disinformation. New knowledge orchestrated the hoax. Now their executives are doing election integrity in 2022. What? Here, here. He was going to say, it's absurd that a new knowledge executive would still be on the site after after a confined bot buy, let alone be relied upon to oversee election integrity in 2022. New knowledge orchestrated a pure hoax designed to manipulate voters in an election. Uh huh. And Twitter is actively working with the DHS. How about that one? Elon Musk. Oh, here's the glorious fail tweet. Elon Musk himself tweets, talked to civil society leaders, Jay Greenblatt, ADL. I'll give you the organizations. You've got two ADL there. You've got another individual from Color of Change. You've got Justice uh, go for, uh, CEO of the Free Press. Oh, the Free Press. I love that. They advocated for banning Alex Jones because they didn't like the things he had to say. Free speech, eh, Elon Musk? Norman Chen, the Asian American Foundation. Actually, I don't have a, I don't have a big issue with, with uh, some of these, just to be, to, be, to, be, to be completely honest. I mean, it's fine if he wants to talk to the Asian American Foundation, the, the NAACP. I get it. You've got the Bush Center. Sure, I guess. Ken Hirsch and Sidney Benavides. This is LULAC. LULAC is, are they going to, let's just pull that up real quick. The uh, Puerto Rico working to empower Latinos at every level. These are grievance based organizations. They exist because they can tell you that bad things are happening. I want to stress this right now, and I hope you all agree with me. I am more than willing to pay $8 per month for a top tier professional account on Twitter. I really, I really am. But that's under the assumption that Elon is fixing the platform. I will not give any money for verification or premium, whatever, so long as Elon is not freeing the political prisoners. At that point, when he reinstates these individuals and allows free speech on the platform, then I'd be willing to pay for it. No. In fact, I will stress this right now. I have Twitter blue. Not only will I not pay for the $8 for the verification, I am going to cancel my Twitter blue right now when Elon Musk follows through and unbans the political prisoners. Then I will absolutely buy. You see, this is a point our good friend Luke Rydkowski made on Timcast IRL. By making Twitter a paid premium service or introducing this, it takes some of the load off of advertisers and gives the power to the consumers, making you the customer, not the product. That's a good point, Luke. That means if Elon Musk doesn't do what we want him to, we don't buy his product. And hey, more power to you, Elon. Good luck. The left won't pay for a product unless you ban us, and we won't pay for it so long as you are. Good luck. I told, I, I said this was going to happen. It's exactly what I said. I said, Elon doesn't understand. We are the compromise. You see, this is exactly the problem. The libertarian types, conservatives, independents, and post liberals, we said we are okay with the left being on the platform saying stupid garbage. Let them have their free speech so long as we get ours. I'm not coming out calling for the banning of people unless they actually advocate violence or commit a crime like posting child abuse. So here's what you get. Elon Musk says, talked to civil society leaders about how Twitter will continue to combat hate and harassment and enforce its election integrity policies. And there it is, my friends. In response directly to a tweet from a from a new knowledge executive, an organization that made bots and manipulated the platform. 
and Elon Musk is working with them to make sure. Okay, you know what? I'll pause there. Maybe Elon just didn't know. Elon, if you didn't know, buddy, I get it. Not everybody knows about the new knowledge story. Maybe the tweets from Mike Cernovich was a, it was a wake up call. Maybe you're like, whoa, we should not rely on these organizations. They're evil. How about this, Elon? How about you want me to spend money on your platform? Release all information pertaining to Twitter's collaboration and conspiracy with the Department of Homeland Security as reported on by The Intercept. Release all of those documents. And I want to know, release the URL to Twitter's government portal that allowed them to flag takedown requests. You want a, you want a penny from me? Then you do you do it. There is no reason, zero, that Elon Musk could not, in a sign of good faith, just come in and said, "Babylon B, you're reinstated." And even if just the Babylon B, hate and harassment. What's hate? Come on, come on, Elon. Tell me what hate is. Is hate when the Babylon B makes a joke about a man of the year? Is that hate? It is. Who do you think you're talking to? Organizations that rely on grievance to make money. Not one of these nonprofits could come out and say everything's fine. Then why would anyone donate to them? I'll tell you this. I did nonprofit fundraising. You know what they say? A sense of urgency is a core component in fundraising. So if any one of these organizations comes out and they say, uh, you know, things are actually improving, guys. Uh, we're going to keep working, but it's getting a lot better. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the ADL that claimed globalist was an anti-Semitic slur. Incredible. That's what you want? Fine. Our good friend Cat Turd, Cat Turd 2 apparently, I think the first one got banned, says, when it comes to unfairly suspended accounts being reinstated, it looks like Elon Musk is only listening to the same a-holes responsible for the BS and other far left groups who could always say anything they wanted. The only group targeted conservatives are getting shafted. Well, I'll, I'll pause right there, Cat Turd. Anti-war leftists also did get banned. There were individuals who were working for RT who did nothing wrong, who got banned. So it's, it's not just conservatives, but it's mostly conservatives. But I don't think that's the core element there. Anti-establishment is the core element. Conservatives were uh, the MAGA Republicans came in, gained tremendous power because of Donald Trump and because of, well, I should say because of the sentiment of the American people who were fed up. And this meant that you had a very large faction of anti-uniparty, anti-establishment voices, predominantly conservative. But that's who the real target is. Just so happens to be the largest faction of that group is conservatives. So yes, Computer Colonics responds, good name, by the way. The advertisers weighed in, money speaks. Yeah, okay. I understand that Elon wants to uh, get off reliance on advertisers. Ron Coleman says, what's your source for this claim? Ron, how about that large advertising groups threatened to boycott ad buys. Some have already canceled their ad buys. If that the threats were, if you reinstate Donald Trump, we boycott. Several organizations, media, media buyers already did. Elon's sweating it. He's got to pay back some of these loans. Where's his money coming from? Uh oh. You see, that's the problem. When Elon first tried to buy the platform, they, they screamed and said, no. Then all of a sudden they were like, no, you buy it. He's like, wait, no. Because I think they realized what their attack vector was going to be. It was going to be that Elon is going to be forced to pay out and Twitter is going to collapse. I'm, I'm, I got to be honest, I'm happy with that. You know, a lot of people are like, Tim, you sure do talk about hating Twitter a lot. Yeah, I do. Like, it's, it's, it's got its net positive for sure. But it's, 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 I don't take this platform seriously. I think y'all need to understand. I used to. I used to actively report on the ground and Twitter was this vehicle. Now, you know what I do? When I tweet stories, it's so that I'm putting a placeholder on them so I can come back to them later. That's basically it. When we're setting up Timcast IRL, I go on my Twitter and I look at the things I tweeted and I'm like, oh, here are the stories. It's, so it's still got a utility for me. But talk about a ne it's, it's a negative user experience. You come on the platform and you just feel bad. And that's the way it is, I guess. So here you go. Politics USA says CNN refuses to pay Elon Musk for Twitter verification. Business Insider reported. They asked 14 news organizations, and the answer is inconclusive for now. The New York Times, The Washington Post, Vox Media declined to comment. Spokespeople at nine other outlets did not return requests. One outlet, CNN, gave a pretty firm no. It is highly unlikely that CNN would cover verification costs on behalf of all employees. 
one might expect that if Twitter does enact the policy, TV networks might want to keep the verification of some employees like star on air talent. I just don't see it. Elon Musk says to all complainers, please continue complaining, but it will cost eight dollars. OK, bro. OK, dude, fine. I think that's fine. The only problem is Elon has now shown that he's going to be working with the, the people who want censorship to stop hate. I'm not interested, dude. I am not going to spend eight bucks a month. I'm not going to spend the three dollars I already am to hear you say that you are going to work with the grievance industry. Sorry, I'm going to cancel Twitter blue right now. This is the game. This is it. Let me tell you, my friends, Stephen King and these far leftists are like, I ain't giving you any money, Elon. And so he says, keep complaining. They're like, you support hate speech. So we're not going to pay. So what does Elon do? He plays this. Well, you know, we're going to go and uh, talk to these grievance or organizations. And then I say, OK, you lost me. I'm not a customer. You know, Jeremy's razors, the Daily Wire, stop giving money to people who hate you. Now, I had Twitter blue. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I was on the Android app. I signed up for it. And I've, I've not really noticed anything valuable coming from it, to be to be completely honest. Maybe they made some money from it, but it's all the better reason to just cancel it anyway. There's this thing. Basically, the reason I bought it was it was like you get free access to articles on Twitter. Never worked for me. No, seriously, I, I'm on the app and I'm supposed it's like free with Twitter blue and I click it and it still locks me out. So whatever. Let's do this. I hope those of you that agree with me. I think this is a fair compromise. Stick Sex and Hammer tweeted, you know, give Elon time. He's got to make this this council has to be reasonable. And these people are like, Tim thinks that Elon should just unban everybody right away. I didn't say literally unban everybody right away right now. I do think there should be a freeing of political prisoners. But I said to Jack Posobiec on the show, you can't just unban literally everybody. Some of these people committed crimes. So it's like you, you need a process that I understand. That being said, the Babylon B, Jordan Peterson, come on, carpe donctum. If you want to play, if you want to play these games, you need to show good faith. Elon Musk could have walked in day one and said, Babylon B, free, you're free. Keep posting. He could have walked in and done and done that. OK, fine. Let me let maybe maybe he's done something like that. I want to see it to all the complainers. When you release the political prisoners, I will spend that eight dollars. I assure you, but not until then. So when you roll out the $8 verification thing, I don't care about a little blue check. I really don't. I mean, I got it. I'll keep it. I'm not one of those stupid lefties who's like, I don't even want to be a blue check. It's so dumb. It's like, yeah, okay, verification has its purpose, I suppose. But I mean, I got like a bunch of followers, so that's probably just good enough anyway, right? 90 days. That's what he says. That's, that's, that's the story. They're going to roll out this purchase program, and then you have 90 days. Okay. If within, uh, you know, I'll put it this way, at any point, Elon, any point that you unban Donald Trump, that you unban Carpe Donctum, Project Veritas, Carl Benjamin, et cetera, et cetera, at any point you do that, I will sign up. But so long as these people are banned from the platform, I'm not interested. And I hope you all can agree with me in, in, that far. Like, stick sex in him. If you guys think he needs time, okay, how about that? But I, I request of you, don't spend any money on the platform until Elon proves he's actually going to do it. And I'll tell you why. Do you want to know why you don't pre-order video games? Don't make the mistake. You pre-order and then you find out they lied and then the game sucks. Yeah, we don't, we don't pre-order games. I used to, not anymore. But you get all the fancy bonuses and the special armor set. Not playing that game. I ain't going to pre-order anything in the hopes of free speech. You give Elon the money and then he says, I already got your money. I don't got to do anything. Make a stand and make a point. Here's, here's how it works. I go to McDonald's. I say, I would like a meal. They say, OK, they, they, you, you pay. The food lands on the counter. I want to know for sure that Elon's actually selling the burgers before I just hand over eight bucks. Now, one could argue you got to pay before you get, right? Yes. But at McDonald's, I can see them cooking the burgers. I want to see Elon cooking the burgers. I want to see Elon. I want to see those burgers lined up under the heat lamps, ready to go. Fast food. So I tell you this. 
You you show me the product exists and you will be unbanning these people. And I will gladly give you more than eight dollars, Elon, for this service. I would prefer that we be the customers, not the advertisers. But until then, I am playing this game. I'm just absolutely not interested in crossing my fingers and hoping. Elon says Twitter's content moderation council will include representatives with widely divergent views, which will certainly include the civil rights community and groups who face hate fueled violence. Okay, who's engaged in the largest degree of violence in van? Oh, it's Antifa on the far left. They'll lie and say it's the far right, uh, the far right, the far right. So here we go again. Libertarians, independents, etc. have routinely offered up compromise. The left says no compromise. Elon says both sides, both sides. You you bring you both in. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Because I said it last week and I said it the week before and I said it months before. The left is going to come in and say, fine, censor these people and we'll be happy. And I'll go, OK, fair compromise. But that's literally what Jack and Vijaya were doing. So I'll make one other point. I'm not interested in spending any money on this platform so long as this report about the DHS goes unanswered. Elon, you now have you're at the helm. You need to assign um, just just tweet this, tweet this, tweet that you've assigned someone to review the DHS collusion, and you'll be putting out a report, and I'll be happy. And I'll say, okay, all right. You know, I, I, know, I know that one's going to be tough. But you want me to spend money? Unban the political prisoners. Otherwise, ain't happening. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.